Close your eyes and watch your breath. As for any thoughts that may go someplace else, you can just let them go. Let them go. You don't have to hold on to them. Hold on to one thing, your awareness of the breath right here. Because the mind needs a foundation. Otherwise it's floating around, and when you're floating around you don't have any place where you can take a good solid stance. But when you're here with the breath, you're at your home base. When you're operating from your home base, then you're safe. They tell the story in the canon of a quail that had wandered away from its ancestral territory. A hawk swoops down, catches it, and as he's carrying it off, the quail laments, Oh, if only I'd stayed in my ancestral territory, I'd be safe. This hawk would have been no match for me. That, of course, that piqued the hawk. He said, Where is your ancestral territory? And the quail said, In a field newly plowed with all the stones turned up. And so the hawk let him go. He said, okay, go back to your territory, but even then you won't be able to escape me. So the quail goes down to the field, stands on top of a stone, and taunts the hawk. He says, come get me, you hawk, come get me. And the hawk swoops down. When the quail sees that he's coming at him full speed, he hides behind the stone. And the hawk shatters his breast on the stone and dies. As I said, this is a simile for how you protect yourself by staying with your home base. Because when you stay with the breath, you have something you can adjust. You can, uh, you can turn this into a home. You can make this comfortable, you can make this broad, you can make this light. Whatever feels good right now, you can work with the breath. And this is your territory. There are so many things out in the world they can take away from you. But your experience of the breath is something that only you can experience. So this is your territory. As the Buddha said, when he first went off and was thinking about trying to find happiness in the world, everywhere he looked, there was everything was already laid claim to. This person, that place, whatever, it already had an owner. But you look inside, and nobody owns your experience of your own mind, nobody else owns your experience of your own body. See if I not realize that this would be a safe place to look for happiness. So we looked inside. Because the pleasures you can get from other people, they can take away at any time. But this is something nobody can take away from you. Even if they kill you, still you have your own experience. So you can make this as comfortable as you want. And as you get to know your mind better, you can make your mind a comfortable mind to be with. That's even more important. Because all too often our own minds are our own worst enemies, thinking about all kinds of things that make us depressed, make us lonely, make us upset. We talk ourselves into a bad mood, I don't know how many times a day. So we learn how to make the mind your best friend, make your mind a safe place to be. And you do that by training it to figure out which thoughts to go with and which thoughts to let go. Like right now, anything that doesn't have to do with the breath, you let it go. You find that you can talk yourself into developing a sense of real well-being right here with just these very simple elements. So don't overlook the good things you've got. Or as John Fuang would say, don't look, overlook the grass at the door to the corral gate. They open the corral gate and the cows go running out. They're looking for grass way out far away. There's grass growing right there, right at the, right at the post, right at the edge of the gate. And they miss it. Here's something right near you that you can use to, to develop a sense of well-being, a sense of safety, a sense of being at home where you belong. So make the most of it. This is the Buddha's gift to us. He found that true happiness can be found right here. He's, he spent 45 years of his life wandering around teaching other people, set out the Dharma and the Vinaya so that his teaching would last for, up to now it's more than 2,000 years. So it's still here for us to take advantage of. So don't miss this opportunity. Look inside. See if you can find the peace and well-being inside the Buddha, that the Buddha found inside himself, and that many other people found inside themselves, and have passed this knowledge along. <laughs>